What's up, guys? We are back on Chasing Timothy, Young Leaders in the Church. Got it that time. Um, well, we are really excited. My name's Robert. I'm, uh, I'm, I have the pleasure of hosting this. Um, it's unique being on the other side of it for me because sometimes I'm the one that's like always trying to answer questions. So uh, I love being able to host podcasts and just be able to like ask the question and then be like, well, if somebody's going to blow something up, it's going to be Derek, not me. So uh, and then I just have to manage it after that. So we had a we had a fun one last time. We that talked about men and women and the church and church leadership. So if you missed that one, please go back and watch it. We want to make sure you get to see that. But this is episode three. We're diving into 1 Timothy, uh, a letter written to a young church leader by Paul, one of the most famous church leaders. Um, and we're going to be diving into chapter three. So it's pretty simple. The episode number is the chapter number. So I'm going to introduce our guests one last, not one last time. Gosh, sorry, Derek. <laughs> Say, hey, you guys haven't been we, doing a great job. Yeah, we really forgot to break the news to you. We're cutting you from the other three, but no. We have Sarah. You know her. She is a TCS worship leader. We're really, I'm going to jack this next one up. We're really excited to have you here. This is Ben, digital communication specialist, IG person. You did mess that up. I <laughs> butchered it. Remind me, digital. Yeah, I was going to say, digital, it was kind of a good mess up. What, you know? coordinator. Yeah. coordinator. So it's everything I said put together in coordination. And with Got specialist. It. Yeah. Specialist. That I like cool. specialist. We should, let's petition. We're going to petition. You're a specialist. Um, and then this is Derek, our party specialist. <laughs> and director of party. party Party operation. <laughs> Director yeah, party of party, party planning. <laughs> you ever been to start party? That's Derek's thing. Oh, yeah, wow. came up with like wow. extravaganza. Big party guy. Derek Huge loves parties. Party guy. Big party guy. <laughs> when, what was the last party that like you and you're married? So like, do you got do you and Marley throw parties? Uh, no, like maybe. <laughs> Like, so I think we're going to try and have some people over on Halloween. Um, <laughs> don't tell anyone. Fall festival party. Yeah, yeah. for our trunk or treat. <laughs> At your house. But we'll like open the garage and hand candy out. I might call that a party. That's a, yeah, there you go. Party. Yeah, party my dog's going to wear a pumpkin know. costume. <laughs> feels like a party to me. Go to bed at nine. Seems like a party. We're going to move on. Let's go to Timothy. Uh, this is, it's a whole thing. So um, yeah, that's Derek. Um, just for reference, because I don't think we've actually said it. He's our Midtown pastor. So no, I'm not. No, he's not. <laughs> party. Um, but party, party specialist, party planner. Um, okay. <laughs> we all got to like compose ourselves after that. First Timothy chapter three. I take that back. Before we go into that, Sarah, we want to jump back to Sarah. Nice save. So we learned a little bit in episode one about why Ben got into ministry, what brought him here. So t tell us, Sarah, what brought you into ministry? What made you want to go into working at a church and ultimately being the Crossing Students Worship Leader? Yeah. Um, well, I'll start many, many, many years ago. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so actually, which would have been like what when Derek was 40 <laughs> or? Okay. Um, it doesn't matter. Anyways, so actually grew up. Um, Christian in a Christian family. My parents were Christian most of their lives. They're actually Pentecostal, which is a whole, a, a whole other game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One might say a party. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Big, there you go. Big party time. So Jesus in the party. Woo -woo. Um, okay. So yeah, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, been going to church my whole life. Um, I grew up in a very small Hispanic church, and I actually started in the worship team when I was 11 years old. Um, and it's funny, everyone sees me singing here, but I actually started on the keys. That was my thing. Um, I've been in love with the piano like for so long since I was a kid. And so it's crazy. I actually um, didn't sing very much. I knew I could sing, I knew I loved singing, but I always kind of accepted that my position was just behind the keys. And um, my sister was kind of more, and my dad, they were more of the worship leaders um, at our church. And then um, I did that for a while until I was like 16. I would sing, you know, here and there, but keys was like my primary thing. And then I left that church um, to find God, really. I, I, I grew up Christian, but I didn't really have a relationship with God. And I feel like that's a common story for a lot of people that grew up in a church. Um, my church just wasn't the best environment. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of hypocrisy. And I just knew that if my parents so faithfully served this God, like, and he was good, it wasn't aligning with what I was seeing around me. And so I had to leave and, and fi find God for my for myself. So I did that. I came to the crossing and... Um, I started on the worship team here singing and I, I, I feel like I kind of wanted to invest more in, in singing cause I, I had done keys for so long and I was like, okay, like 
this is something new. It's a new season of my life. Like, let's see where that goes. So it's crazy because um, the question is like, why did I want to be a worship leader? And I don't really think I wanted to ever. Um, but the thing is that sometimes God, where he places you, you end up realizing it's it's actually what you do want. Um, but because of fear and, and stuff like that and me accepting, I was just very introverted growing up my whole life. Um, I never would have chosen that for myself, probably. I was very content in the background. Um, and so when God called me to this position of, you know, being a worship leader, I then realized um, out of my comfort zone that this was something I always wanted, um, that this was something that was beautiful to me and, and sparked such, such a passion for me. Um, and so that's, I don't know, that's a message to you guys, I guess, is like, sometimes you have to accept God knows what's best for you. Like God knows what you want sometimes more than what you want. Um, I think I very much constricted myself into my comfort zone. I thought that was the safest place for me and it really wasn't. Um, so yeah, so I feel like God helped me realize I wanted to be a worship leader. And, um, when, even when I was in worship uh, as a kid, it it didn't mean that much to me. Um, I didn't have that relationship with Jesus. And that's why for me, it's so important that, you know, you know, Jesus when you're serving in the church, when you're in ministry, when you're on stage, whatever it is, um, doing cameras. I mean, there's so many moving pieces that you have that relationship with Jesus, because now that I do, I'm so in love with um, just worship leading and and the musical side of worship. It's, it's brought in such a an amazing um, passion in me and, and sparked such an ama amazing passion. Um, and so now it's like, I, I love worship leading and it's, I, I never would have done it if I wouldn't have faithfully walked through that door that God had opened for me. Um, and it was the scariest thing for me. Um, when you offered me this job, I was quite terrified. Um, and I, I was, was like, say, cause we, we saw you lead <clears throat> at a worship team at forest home. Yeah. And then we were like, Oh, Hey, like she's legit. Yeah. Like, she's cool let's talk to her about worship leading for the crossing students. And then the rest was history. Yeah. I was, and that was like was one great. of the first times I'd ever really worship led. Wor wow. That's yeah. cool. That's so, so nuts. yeah. That's so great. it's crazy. Um, that. and God really just kind of took over from there and I just kept saying yes to things and not letting my fear hold me back. And now I'm here. Um, so it's pretty crazy and I love it. And something great that I've heard recently is like, um, our, our, our praises, our sound, and our worship is an aroma. And that is something so true. Like if I can really describe like what I feel when I'm in a room and I'm leading people in worship, um, that's what it feels like. It is, it's an aroma. The atmosphere in a room changes. And it's something I, I don't think we can really put words to, but our soul is so acquainted with it. Um, and so that, yeah, I'm just forever in love with that. Just what it does in a room, what it does to people, um, how we can be in a room worshiping God and the rest of the world is just doesn't exist. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love that. I love that you said um, leading people in the room to worship because First Timothy 3 is going to start giving out some very clear expectations to church leaders, right? The people that are doing that thing, leading them into worship, leading them into God's word, leading them into a better life with Christ. So he starts laying out some very, very like, hey, if you're going to lead these people, Timothy, here's the people you need to find to put in charge. Here's some very big expectations for them. So I, I love that you said you have the opportunity to lead people in worship because that's that's literally what you're doing. You're leading them into that space and your life ultimately is the biggest reflection of the God they're worshiping in that. So you are making sure they understand like, hey, we're not in this for Sarah. We're not in this for you. We're in this for God and we're in for, we're in this for Jesus. So, and you, and you do it so well. So um, let's really jump into this. Um, there's some big words in this one. We go right away and we see this in 1 Timothy 3, 1. Here's a trustworthy saying. I love how Paul like does that twice in Timothy where he's just like, hey, Timothy, this is, pay attention. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Focus this, right I mean, here. This is really good this content. Is, this is, <laughs> I imagine Paul writing this and then going back and going, yeah, that was good. Yeah, he that was good. <laughs> like writing it down, like pay attention, Timothy. He says, Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. And then if you jump down to eight, he says, in the same way, deacons. These are some words that like don't get thrown around, at least the crossings like church culture culture very often. I grew up with my grandparents' church saying the word deacon. So oh. like I've heard it kind of growing up. But um overseer and deacon, Derek, I'm gonna throw this your way, give you all the hard stuff. Um, give you uh women in chapter two, give you <laughs> dating in love, sex and dating when you bring when we bring you in to speak. Yeah. I've referenced it every time. I'm gonna reference it again. <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep the trend so going. So we gotta keep the trend hey, going. Ten percent. Ten percent, man. Ten percent. <laughs> 
I'm just waiting for your young reference in this one. Yeah. What word or phrase are you going to use? Can't use it now because I just teed you up. So don't do it. You got to work it in naturally. Okay. Okay. We don't okay. expect it. Okay. Yeah, we got to make sure. sure we don't expect it. So yeah, overseers and deacons, can you break down what Paul is talking about in, 2,000 years ago in this letter to Timothy? Yeah. So again, you know, you're a junior high or you're a high schooler. Let's translate it forward because those words can just sound old. They just hearing them, it sounds old to me. So first pro tip, when you see overseer and you also see the word elder sometimes uh, in the Bible, it's the same thing. So if you ever hear us at the crossing say our elders and you're like picturing like Lord of the Rings or like the Mandalorian or something and you're like, like an overseer is what we're talking about. And then there's deacons. And so it's helpful to think about it in the uh, through the viewpoint that the church is ultimately like a team and on any team, there's different roles that have to be played. So whether you like, uh, sports or whether you're in band or whatever it is you do, you're on Fortnite, right? And like everyone, uh, actually don't know how Fortnite works. So you really don't, but I'm wondering if you're trying to count Fortnite and Mandalorian as your young reference, but we're going to no, keep no, moving. No, 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 I have, I know what I'm going to do. I don't know when I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> um, the suspense. So, yeah. there's, there's all these, these roles that you play. And so just to put it simply, uh, especially if you're like, man, why does the church have to have all these different people and responsibilities? And man, like, you know, let's just go back to how it was like in the Jesus times, they had roles and responsibilities. And so if you're like, I just want the organic, like let's all sit around in a circle and sing songs. Okay. You just don't really see it in the Bible. Um, so, uh, do what you will with that. An overseer is someone who's responsible for pastoring, for shepherding, for leading an area uh, of the church, for oversight, for teaching and correcting. And so, you know, uh, Rob, you're an overseer, right? You oversee our student ministry. You're a pastor in that way, and you're held to a set of standards. I am when it comes to uh, liking to party. And I'm just kidding. Midtown. Man. I am. I, I Midtown is really just a party. In yeah, all reality. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, I oversee Midtown. Now, a deacon is someone who is responsible for the running of the operation of the church, for how it how it happens. So if you think about your school, right, you might have your a principal who's an overseer and all that. And then you have all these people who are running around making sure everything happens at your school. Those are deacons, right? They're the people who are doing a certain thing. Sometimes it's a task. Sometimes it's administrative. Uh, I'd use Ben as an example. Like if we were to use this kind of language, Ben serves in a deacon-like role. And there's standards and expectations of that. But what that looks like in 2023 is, way different, right? Because you take care of our Instagram and our social media. You're performing that. That's really good. I love it. And I love that you broke down that there's different positions because I'm reminded of something else that Paul writes in a different letter. This uh, this comes from 1 Corinthians 12. Um, he says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts yes. form one body in Christ. And then he goes on and he says this, this is my favorite thing. And I love teaching on this. Now, if the foot should say, I'm not the hand, so I do not belong to the body, like what? Because if the eye says, well, I'm not, or the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. It's like our bodies are made up of all these different parts that do different things. Just like you said, we don't want to, well, if you just want to go back to sitting around in a circle and singing Kumbaya, well, I can tell you this right now, you don't want me singing it. You don't want me leading it because that's not my gift. Like that's not what God has for me in the ministry. Just like I'm sure you might sit around and go, well, maybe everyone should have a chance to just run the Instagram. Well, no, hold on, pump the brakes. Cause I really don't want to see what you're posting on the church's Instagram. That's what Ben's for. That's his gifting. That's what God's put him here for this position, bro. No cap, (laughs) (laughs) no cap, bro. That's facts. (laughs) It was no cap, it my was, bro. It was the <laughs> smile, like two sentences before oh, that, why? like I was talking and he went <laughs> because I knew it was coming and yeah. it still caught and me. You're off making guard. a great point, yeah. Um, and that's why. Do you remember the point, or were you just thinking about? No cap? <laughs> I was thinking no cap. <laughs> Completely no cap. tuned you out that whole time. All right, I love it. But seriously, there are. Here's the other thing. Derek did just illustrate a great point. You don't want him up there teaching to students anymore. That's the problem. So his I'm position to get you to is never elsewhere. invite me back again. <laughs> but for real, it's that we all have unique positions in the church. We all have a different part in the body to play. Just like if I threw a baseball over to Derek, I wouldn't say catch it with your nose. That your nose is not for catching. Your hand is for catching, right? Derek is here for Midtown. Ben is here for Instagram. You're here for leading worship. I'm here for students. Like we all have that different position. 
none of us are going to edit this video. That's Trey's job in the church. Trey has that skill and that set that God has put into him. So I, I just love that, how you broke that down of like all these people had different positions back then and they were all skilled and put in that positions and they were there to oversee or be the deacons for those things. So I want to shift to Ben and Sarah and I want to ask um, specifically speaking to the younger generation, the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, we didn't read this. So I'm going to read it now. So this is 1 Timothy 3, and I'm going to read verse 1 again and then go into verse 2. It says this. Here's a trustworthy saying. Come on, Paul gloating just again. Um, Whoever aspires to be an overseer, a pastor, an elder, somebody who's leading in the church, desires a noble task. But this is where we get to it. Now, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, or just faithful in general, uh, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. And then he goes on and on and on and he breaks down these things. You should not be doing this. You should not be doing this. You should be doing this. You should be doing this. Think about a student who wants to go into ministry. Put yourself you in college, put yourself, you on the worship team as an 11 year old. Uh, think about, uh, for me, it was in high school. Um, I realized I wanted to be a youth pastor because of my youth pastor and seeing that those kids that are like, I want to be part of the church. What should they be doing now? Or maybe out of that list, what are some things they should be focusing on about themselves to help set them up for that? What are the qualities they should be like, well, you know, I'm, I'm a liar right now. Maybe I should focus on that. Like, what are these things that they should be putting into their lives, these characteristics that can lead them into that ministry? I would say um, follow your convictions is one thing. Um, I think being so young in ministry for me, there was a lot of times I was doing things that I was like, I don't feel like I should be up here right now. Um, and I think like, it's obviously your decision, whether you choose to ignore that or to correct it and, and do better. And, um, see what, what does Jesus think about this? Why am I feeling this, um, confliction, um, so just following, yeah, following your convictions, because I think it's really important that you know, when you're a leader in a church, like you're, you're not supposed to look like the rest of the world. Um, and people come to church to get led, um, into, in out of the world, not into the world, you know? So, um, yeah, just, just like paying attention to your convictions, trying to make, making sure you're looking different. You're not going with the flow of the world. We're called to go against the flow of the world. Um, yeah. That's That's good. Ben, what about you? What are some things that students can be working on, um, in these moments in their life? Yeah, I, uh, I think something that's very important and I'm still growing in and, um, it's like growing in your own voice or like whatever. Cause I already know, like being in, in school, there's those, those cool kids, whatever that like, everyone's like, okay, what they say goes. And if you don't go with them, then you're like the weird kid. But, uh, after high school, those guys are losers. I'm just gonna be real. (laughs) (laughs) So like stay true to yourself because you're going to be grateful for it. You know, like years down the line. And, uh, yeah, I think like we said before in earlier episodes, like we would be grateful if we started sooner and trying to like really get the, the things that, you know, the, the word teaches into our soul, into our habits and things like that. So that's good. And I, I love what you both said. Cause I think of both of you said and hearkened back to what we talked about in episode one of the idea of the foundation and like laying that foundation, knowing what you believe, knowing what God has called you to, and then staying in that and sticking in that. Because what Paul is saying here about overseers is should be nothing new to those Christ followers. Those should be qualities that are built into them as Christ followers. They should have already been living that way. They should have been an example in that way. I mean, worthy of respect, sincere, like those are things that like we should all be described of, right? Whether we're leading a church or whether we're just attending a church and trying to be a Christ follower, those things should all be there. So I love that. And focusing on that in the time earlier than later, because it's harder to change a habit when it's become a habit. But when you catch it soon enough, we can shift it and get back to where Christ is calling us. Um, Can I add in something too? Just using you two as an example, Ben and Sarah, not only are you guys talented when it comes to the thing you do, but what I know to be true about both you guys and what I would encourage students with is like, you guys walk the walk. And so you guys are practicing these things all the time. And I, sh- I want to platform you guys in that way. Don't make a mistake from here on out. But um, you guys do this. And what I think is true and might be helpful for students is like, if God's in control, like God wants young leaders 
like you guys, not just that you're great at singing, but that you really want to follow Jesus. Right. And I know that's your heart too. And so like God's going to reward and I, I want to be careful here, he, but he's going to elevate that um, because that's the heart that he's looking for. That's good. That's strong. I like that a lot. So, and it's the, it's the idea of integrity, right? Like yes. we know, we know that you two as leaders are the same person on and off Instagram and on and off stage, right? It's you're putting that not into practice where people see it literally your whole lives and you are living that out. Because if I'm only think about it in sports, if I'm only, my only practice is the games what that's nothing like we have practice for a reason. We work on things outside of those moments for a reason, just like we should be working on ourselves and how we're living outside of when I'm doing my job at the church or when I'm doing what God has called me to No, It's, it's your whole life. That's so true. Um, the reality is God sees everything. Um, he's ever present, ever knowing. And so the moment you try to live that double life and you're in, doing something for his church, like he's not going to let shame be put to his name. Like he will pluck you out. <laughs> so it's like really keeping that in mind. Like God sees you, um, the decisions you make with people by yourself off the stage, wherever it is. Um, he's equally aware of what you're doing and choosing and thinking. Um, it's really important. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Well, that was great. Deacons, overseers. Next one, we're going to jump into chapter four. Man, this is where one of the most famous verses comes out in Timothy, right? This is one of the ones is kind of where it's all framed of. I'm going to give you a little teaser. First Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in faith, in love, and in purity. So we're going to tackle that a little bit in the next episode. Um, but hey, we will be back again next time. So we'll see you there. Thanks for checking it out.